The month of December is incredibly busy for us. Seven matches in total, four in the league. The first match in the Turkish Cup for us, the fifth round matchup against Rizespor, which is still to come. And our final two matches in the league phase of the Europa Conference League. If we win both of them, we are guaranteed a spot in the knockout rounds. If we win one, we may still get that spot. We are taking on FC Nordjylland and Rijeka in this episode of Bottom to the Top. Let's get to it. And of course, I mean, let's get to it as soon as we have recapped what has happened since the last episode. Hello, everybody. It is episode number 40 of Bottom to the Top. I'm Mr. Cellophane. Happy New Year, everybody. And welcome to the first episode of 2024. Three league matches have come since we dropped the 3-1 decision to Athletic Club Bill Bow in the Europa Conference League. We are still very much alive in that competition. And as we mentioned in the intro, we have not one, but two Conference League matchups coming up in this episode. But first, let's talk about what happened in between. We started off a stretch of three straight league matchups on the road against Samsung Spor. We ended up drawing 2-2. They went ahead very early in the fourth minute. Suleiman Sabishi tied things up just a couple of minutes later before Samsung Spor went into the locker room at the half with a 2-1 lead. And while he didn't get the start, Bubakar Traore and his header off of the corner delivery from James Furlong tied things up in the 66th minute. We stayed there for the rest of the match, getting one all-important point on the road and keep us in contention for the European places next year. But it got better. We followed it up with a 3-2 victory at home against Ankara Keshirengushu. Say that three times fast. We ended up actually taking a 3-0 lead in this match. It started off with an own goal that actually hit the crossbar and then went off the back of Ozankan Orush, the goalkeeper, to go in to put us up 1-0. Bubakar Traore made it 2. Suleiman Sabishi in the second half made it 3. But then Leon Shatak scored in the 56th and 84th minutes to kind of give us a little bit of that that tight bum time where I can't say squeaky bum. I'm not British. I'd love to. It would be so much fun to be able to say that. Uh, so it did make things a little tense toward the end, but we really were in control of the match pretty much from start to finish. And then we carried that momentum into a televised match just a couple of days later at home against Caselia Spore. This time, Kampalat Shelik getting the start. He had come to us saying, look, I deserve more first-team football. And not only did he think so, but Dre Siddiqui and Yusuf Insi also agreed. So Insi actually not named in the team for this match, even though he is our captain, to make way for Shelik. And Shelik, well, he made it worth our while because he scored not once, But twice, this first attempt, beautiful cross from Furlong, header off the crossbar, off the ground, back off the crossbar, finally into the back of the net. And that is my early vote. Well, we're almost halfway through the season, but that is my vote right now for goal of the year. He added another in the 34th minute. Uh, Douglas Tanke, by the way, because Aliaspor had taken the lead just a minute before that goal we just watched. And then Mustafa Demirci iced the game in the 92nd minute to give us a 3-1 lead and yet another multi-goal victory. And the best part of it is, after 15 matches, that's right, kids, Kasim Pasha sitting at the top of the table on 30 points. We are tied on points with Fenerbahce and Trabzonspor. We did beat both of those teams earlier, which is why we are ahead. We also have the superior goal difference. Now, Fenerbahce does have a game in hand on us, so they can retake that top spot, but 
It's good to be the king, even if it is just for a day. Well, Gautuk acquitted himself pretty well, forgetting the 3-1 match against Bilbao, but we weren't expected to win that anyway. But we are very happy to report that Morris Nicholas is back in goal. Now, we do have a couple of players who are at risk of being suspended with an additional yellow card, so we do have to keep our eye on that. Our back four is going to be Furlong, Amenda, Benedict Joseph, and Mateus Henrique. Morgantini did play in one of the league matches, but he's still not 100%, so we really don't want to risk him in a match where we are heavy favorites. Our midfield is going to be Siddiqui, Evan Laidler, and Ali Khan. Kampalad Shalik has earned himself a second consecutive start, this time in Europe. He's going to be with Yusuf Insi and hoping to hit double digits in goals on the season. It's Bubakar Traore at striker. Sincerely hoping that we don't fall into the trap of thinking that this match is just going to be a cakewalk. However, we are unbeaten in our last 10 matches at home. And it has been a while since we lost. Of course, it was Bill Bow. We've been talking about it a lot. So a three-game unbeaten streak in all competitions is on the line. Nordjylland is going to be in the red. We are in the very familiar white and black stripes and we are hoping to get this match off to a very quick start however it looks like Norgeland is dominating possession in the early going we have taken that over with the first five shots of the match and now later throwing it ahead Yusuf his pass is going to be intercepted by Halgon I'll drop it to Christensen who will launch it deep looking for DeWitt and he finds him Getting in front of him is Amenda, or is that Joseph? I'm not sure. Flipping it far post. Ingvardsen heading it down for his sixth goal of the year. And we were doing so very well. The turnover, the counterattack. VAR, please say that he was offside. He was not. And this is exactly what happened against Casalia Spore a team that we were massively favored over, coming and getting the first goal on our pitch on their first shot of the match. In fact, it happened with Bill Bow as well, although, again, we were not expected to beat Bill Bow. Mateus Henry carrying it up himself on the near sideline, in the middle, Ali Khan, back for Mateus Henry, tries to get past one man, flipping it forward, looking for Yusuf. Triori's going to pick it off. Yusuf with a shot, and Christensen gets his hand on that one to knock it safely over the crossbar. Yusuf NC to deliver the corner because we do not have Shikishi in there. Triori to Joseph, across, looking for Laidler, but cleared by Asconi. Furlong is going to gather it and end the threat. 9-1, to one, your shot's on goal, but we are still losing 1-0. Koulibaly to deliver a corner kick. That one's on. Nicholas makes the save, but Eirik Halgon puts the rebound home for his third goal of the year, and maybe I shouldn't have started Moritz Nicholas. VAR has upheld this one as well. Nicholas did a good job making the initial save. It was a tough shot, but he couldn't hold on to it. It bounced right to Halgon. And now three shots, three of them on target, two in the back of the Kasim Pasha net. And as we take a look at the live table, we are still barely hanging on to a spot in the knockout rounds. We've dropped to 22nd. We are on six points. Goal difference is the only thing that is keeping us above that drop line right now. And with only one match left after this, we need to rescue at least one point from this one. Otherwise, our dreams of continuing European football into January and beyond may be coming to an end. We're not going to make any panic changes at halftime, however, we did tell the team that they are letting themselves down and they must do better. Are they going to take that message to heart? We've got two goals we need to make up and we are running out of time. Just 30 minutes left in this match. We are going to shout out encouragement to our team and we're going to go to a more attacking mentality. We need to throw the kitchen sink at Nordschland. We're out shooting them 15 to 6. We're beating them in XG. We had not found the back of the net, and we need to do something different. Um, Furlong has played so very well, but he's just not having a great match. Umit Khan is coming in. 
we are going to uh, bring in Morgan Tini uh, on the right wing back and move him into a more attacking pose as well. Shalik just not getting the job done today. Shikishi is going to come in in his place. Yusuf Insi a little bit tired. Do we want to make a move? We'll move Ali Khan up and bring in Samed Hoposh as our playmaker. Tons of changes with about 15 minutes left. We'll see how much injury time gets added on as well. Can we please see some highlights in this last 10 minutes? I am begging you. This is a match we should be winning. Why we aren't, I don't understand. Good job by Sakishi. Play the head. Ali Khan, he's got Triori. Triori one on one, and he hits the post. Why does FM hate me sometimes? One minute added on. Are you joking me? We did a quadruple change. And we only get one minute of added time. And they are going to let it run down. This match, for all intents and purposes, no matter what Ingvartsen does here, is over. It's going to clip the edge of the crossbar and go out for a goal kick. Nicholas is going to look to send it long, but time is tick, tick, ticking away for us. Nicholas, actually, he's going to just drop it short to Amenda. We're in the 92nd minute of essentially 91, and there it is, the final whistle. 19-9. to 9. Shots on goal. 1.86 XG. Zero on the scoreboard. We fall to Nordjylland 2-0. We have a match in the league against Ayup Spore that hopefully we can use to bounce back and gain some momentum before our potentially final match in the Europa Conference League. After the start we got off to, thinking that we may get eliminated at this phase, that's a tough pill to swallow. Well, the Ayup Spore match didn't quite work out the way we expected. We played to a 2-2 draw, which does make us unbeaten in seven in a row in the league but just to give you an idea of how this match went we are not going to show our goals but theirs we were up 2-0 when a terrible pass from a dem was picked off right in front of umicon sites fed Ephicon in and in the 69th minute it became two to one and then sites just four minutes later the dagger in our hearts and this was all on mortz nicholas Ball played back to him, throws it forward, seemingly without a care. Seitz picks it off. Nicholas, well out of position by the time Seitz puts his ninth goal of the year past him. But it, it could be worse. I mean, only three points separate fifth from first. We had an opportunity to get back to the top of the table. Adana Demerspor uh, played before we did. They won and went ahead of us. We could have 33 points right now. We should have 33 points right now. Instead, we are on 31, but just two points off of the top. So let us quickly set the stage before we take on Rijeka in our final league phase match of the Europa Conference League. We're currently sitting in 22nd place. Nine points, so a win is enough to get us in. A draw, and we are probably in, but we'll need a little bit of help. A loss, we still could be in, but we need a lot of help. Rajek is currently sitting in 28th. They are two points behind us. So if they beat us, they actually leapfrog us and make it a little bit more difficult for us to make it into the knockout rounds. That is our goal. And this is the team that we hope to do it with. They look pretty good on paper. Nicholas in goal, a back four, of Furlong, Adem, Amenda, and Morgantini, a midfield of Siddiqui, Ali Khan, and Ugashan, who has not been playing a lot, to be fair. Sakishi, Yusuf, and Traore on the attack. There is a lot of knowledge of each other, a lot of comfort in the guys on the pitch. They just need to translate the theoretical into the actual win and we are in now the team is nice and loose 
We were very laid back with them during our team talk in the locker room prior to this match as the referees and the teams are taking the pitch. Rijeka is in the white and light blue. We are in the dark gray with the orange stripe. I talk about the other kit, you know, the light blue one, the one that I like so much. This is our lucky kit. We are on the road in the Europa Conference League and Yusuf Insi with the long throw, looking to get it into the box, cleared away by Javi Martinez, but it's right back to Yusuf, carrying it into the interior, Adem with it, moving to his left, gets past one man, gets past the second, he's behind the defense, he shoots, and a save made by the goalkeeper, holy Moses, what a beautiful job of ball movement by Adem, first shot of the match for Kasim Pasha, it was on target, it probably should have gone in, Adem did everything right there except score. It's breezy. There's a bit of a drizzle. It's 53 degrees here at the stadium. Rijeka at home. Yusuf to throw it in. Those final third throw-ins. Getting it back from Amenda. Looking far post. Can't find Bubakar Traore. It's cleared away. Morgantini is there with a little bit of space. Into the middle. Ugashan. He's going to look for Morgantini on the right wing. Can't find an inroad. So back for Amenda. In the middle. Siddiqui. Throwing it on goal. It's going to go off the goalkeeper's hands. And out behind for a corner kick. That was another fantastic opportunity. The goalkeeper didn't see it till the last second. Sakishi with the corner. Can't find any of his men. It's going to be cleared out and go for yet another Kasim Pasha throw. We played over 32 minutes of this match. And so far, it is still nil-nil between Rijeka and Kasim Pasha. We even got nearly as many shots on goal as we have in the previous matches. Our last match against the Ayub Spore. We tied 2-2. We threw 30 shots on goal. And Rajeka almost got one off of a set piece. Holy cow, we got very lucky. We've hit the half. Nil-nil is your score. Our team playing decently well under the circumstances. Rajeka is dominating possession. They have more shots than we do. They have more shots on target than we do. And their XG is more than twice what we have. We need to step it up in the final 45. We have to move on to the knockout stages. Otherwise, this whole European journey, while it's been fun, while it's been a fantastic first experience for us as a manager and Kasim Pasha and our fan base as a team because it is their first time in Europe. Still going to be a little disappointing after the start we got out to. We won two of our first three. We haven't won in Europe since. We've reminded our team they are still very much in this match, but we do need to step it up. We're still currently in 22nd place. And honestly, if we don't win or draw, we very well could be out of the knockout stages. There are lots of teams on six points with a minus one goal differential. We would, if we lost, we'd fall to minus two and we would be out. So we need to keep things going and we have the ball in the 66th minute. Morgantini will drop it for Amanda. A little bit of pressure on him in the middle. Siddiqui ahead for Ali Khan. Ali Khan turns, moves it forward, splits the defense, shoots and misses wide. Substitution coming on for Rijeka and we may need to look and make a couple of changes. Corner kick sent in and over. Woo! Kicking himself for missing that. 20 minutes left on the clock. And we, we've got to get things going. Ali Khan is going to come off. Samed Hoposh is in. Kampalat Shelly will make his way onto the pitch in place of Sikishi. And uh, oh, Bubakar Traore. He's still motivated. He's not doing so great, though. Siddiqui is going to make way for Evan Laidler in the defensive midfield, getting some fresh legs out there. Let's make an impact in the time we have remaining. It's less than 18 minutes in regulation. Now, if we hang on to the draw, we should move forward based on what is happening around the conference league Right now, and Furlong in a dangerous position with a free kick sends it on, and Coyote Bankhole makes the save. 
It'll be a corner. We are sending a ton of men forward. Morgantini is going to take it in. Amenda on and Bankol makes the save right at the goalkeeper. 14 minutes left. We are in 21st place. Please, please, please. Can we hang on? Rijeka, though, on the attack. Goda, near side, into the middle. Amenda will clear it, only as far as Sosa, nodding it back down to Goda, sending it across. Obergon on Nicholas. What a save. Putting it behind. A minute and a half to go. Horvat to take the corner for Rijeka. We must hold firm. Horvat. For Obergon, back for Horvat, into the box. Triore looking to clear. Eile dropping it to Sosa. And that will end the attack. Three minutes on. Can we hang in there? We can. It is full time. We did not score. But Rajeka didn't score either. Nil, nil is your score at the end, and I think that's enough to get us into the knockout stages. Always good to get a result, even if we're not playing well. Looking at the final table, 22nd place. Could have been worse. Should have been better, but could have been much worse. The news item is in our inbox. We have officially secured a playoff spot in the UEFA Europa Conference League. We're moving on. We've got at least one more match in Europe left to play. Make that two more matches in Europe. The two legs of the UEFA Europa Conference League knockout playoff round are coming up in the month of February. That is when we are going to come back. At least that's the plan for right now. We've got the fifth round of the Turkish Cup. Should be pretty easy against Rizespor, but we really don't want to look past any opponent right now. We'll see if we make it to the sixth round, which we should. We may come back for that matchup as well. We may wait. That's all to be determined. The only thing I do know is that by the time we come back, at the very least, the January transfer window will have opened. We're probably not going to be doing a ton of business, although we have discovered that in our attacking midfield, we have a ton of options, and we might have some youth that we cash in on because, frankly, we can't play everybody. So a bit disappointing we didn't get a win in this first episode of 2024. We did manage points in both matches, so I guess that is something. We're going to continue our climb up the league table. We're going to see how we do in the Cup, and Europe, well, it continues for at least one more episode thank you all very much for joining me make sure you hit that like button subscribe turn on your notifications do all of that good stuff to support the channel and we will see you tomorrow until then bye bar <laughs>